Greetings, I'm Chevalier and I bid you welcome to the situation and guide of Vajanagar. This is going to be part 2 the expansion guide. So Vajanagar, as I said before, is uh, oh, Shepala, medium a medium level nation in India. Uh, no, medium nation in the, in the world and a uh, high nation in India. They have a decent amount of force damage, so that will allow them to expand quite fast. Although your first step into expansion is Bakpanis, you do outnumber them by one troop and you'll have some allies which might help you basically fight against black mines. So let's talk about every use of attack and whom you should attack uh, uh, first. First and foremost you have a core on uh, Raju Doab on black mines. My recommendation is to simply take uh, Raju Do uh, Doab from him uh, and feed lands to Andraha, uh, this and this, then break the alliance with Andraha and uh, just fabric claims and take this lands from Andraha. Followed by that is a war against Gujarat. Uh, make sure that you have allied with the Gujarat enemies. Probably Melwar is the best option right now in this playthrough. And just fabricate claims on North Konka and then take land from here and slowly expand into other nations. Remember that you can form uh, Bahrat. So try to make sure that you make your way onto this lands. Right? Make sure that you make uh, your way into those lands that are necessary for you to form a to form Bahrat, basically. So uh, I really do not know. They really need a map mode, to be honest. Like if I click here, it will show me whatever I need to take to form that uh, that nation. That would be quite nice. But yeah, they are mostly. Let's see, Rajadoab, uh, Cochin should be around this area here. Uh, Venad as well. If I'm not mistaken, Venad is here as well. So. I think they're mostly reliant on these regions here and the region around this area here basically on the southern tip of, uh, of Vajayanagar so it should be quite easy to take them but you'll have to check them one by one at a time I honestly can't remember them so Kote, Kote is here so yeah they're mostly reliant on this region here uh, once you've done this you're gonna get a huge amount of claims and you're not gonna need the expansion from or you're gonna need the influence ideas basically you just want to use the minus 20% and use your own claims there. Other than this, uh, try to expand into these guys as a tertiary, but the first war is going to be against Parmanis, then break the alliance with Andraha, then the second war against Gujarat, take um, uh, Norkonkan, then slowly, slowly take this lands here and feed them to Jaffa. Uh, chill on these guys here, and the same goes for Mysore here, uh, for Mysore, for all leaves. And just feed him to to Jaffa here. Then, once the alliance is broken with Andraha, attack Andraha, uh, fully take Andraha, just leave them uh, Warangal and Konsaneha, uh, uh, then slowly move into Orissa, they are moving to this side as well to control the, the coastal train nodes basically, which are really important. At the same time, fabricate claims on this region here and move against Gujarat and uh, Katiwar as well in the second, in the fourth and fifth war here. Let's go for Sindh as well in the sixth war. Uh, by this time, probably you're gonna have to attack Bahmanis as well again. So move again to Bahmanis. And pretty much is a standard expansion. There's nothing much more to say here. As I said before, it's a trench warfare. Like you have only one way to expand, and you should expand as cheeky as smart as possible so you won't waste time. Uh, your your goal is to basically hit uh, into this region here of Yarkand and slowly move into those full CP into these lands and create tunnels up the way to Moscovy and uh, into Europe so you can actually get the uh, get the technologies faster basically the institutions a little bit faster other than this the Timurids might collapse and you might want to exp expand into the Timurids as well You'll do this with Persia and taking one core from Persia. You might want to uh, expand into Balochistan as well. Uh, if say, uh, if uh, the Timurids haven't taken them over as well, or if Persia hasn't expanded into the region, the, this region as well. As for this side here, you should expand here as well. But this is tertiary. In uh, while well, this is secondary, this is tertiary, and the expansion into here should be done once you've taken over Bengal and uh, once you have uh, for example the those whole cb so you can have a fast expansion and fast uh, vassalization here 
Astro Mink here, try to wait until they get killed, or hopefully they'll get killed and you're gonna uh, slowly slowly piece them back together or just uh, do a land conquest or vassal feeding, it's up to you how you want to pull it off. As for this guys here, this is part basically of the, of the late game and the expansion into this guy should be done again with those soul CB and the vassal feeding until you can take this lands as well. Uh, there is something to be said about using the those walls to be and taking lands from yourself with uh, and coring them. That's gonna give you a minus 50% uh, core creation cost because you will make them into a territory and you're gonna pay only five points with the with the seer from the admin for the ability. You're gonna pay. Uh, you're gonna pay what? You're gonna pay four ducats, the uh, four points, and that will be quite nice. Uh, and if you want to go for influence, you'll need the diplomatic organization cost minus 25 and at the same time you'll need the the policy from admin and influence that gives you 20% cost that's gonna also reduce you to about 4. So how you are going to pull it off, it works so you can actually uh, pull it uh, double ways. So you can expand with claims and uh, with uh, with vassals or with just scoring. That's uh, so that does, those are the options basically. So let's do a recap and uh, really talk about this on a year by year basis. So in the first five years the war with Bahman issue ended, then the next couple of years the war with Gujarat. At the same time the war, the, the truce with Andraha should be almost over once you have taken over Guj uh, Gujarat, well, once you have taken uh, North Konkan from Gujarat. Uh, while the truth this continues to be to go on and uh, like you have about one year and one year and a half I think uh, until you, uh, it's over uh, conquer the conquer these guys and expand make sure you have claims of course pretty much standard stuff then attack Andreha this is gonna get you perhaps into the 20 year mark something about that perhaps 23 year mark once you've taken over Andraha. After this a war against Bakmanis again because the truce will be over and take some more lands for Bakmanis. Remember that you must have claims of course pretty much standard stuff. Uh, focus on the lands here as I said before so you can actually form Bakhrat. So you don't need any you don't need tech 10 you just need that stability so make sure you keep stability up at 3 uh, to events if at all possible. Next expanding to Orisa you can fabricate a decent amount of claims so you can take over Risa, then expand into Bengal as well. Uh, if you want you can take the lands of Midapur and Bolosore as well so you can actually have a landline until Bengal so you can actually expand into Bengal as well. But what this means if you expand into Bengal is that you can have control over this train out here which means that you're gonna get more cash here and then more cash here. This is gonna be quite great. Other than this once the war with Orisa is over, uh, fight Gujarat again, if at all possible, and take the lands here. And then fight Katiwar and take the lands from Katiwar as well, then fight Sint. Uh, expansion all the way to Bengal and all the way into the Indian coastline, coastline, basically like this, should take you, I would say, around 50 years to expansion on both sides. There are plenty of truces, and remember that you can expand into Bahmanis as well into this land so they're gonna take you about 50 years I would say to basically take a decent amount of chance for this land maybe 40 to 50 years after this is done and let's say that you're gonna you're a bit slow let's say that is the 1500s right your next targets of expansion in, is slowly slowly into this land here by now I think that you should uh, have formed the uh, Bah... Bahrat, not Bahmanis Bahrat, which is gonna be quite nice. You're gonna have the claims. So the expansion into India should be done with those minus 25% claims. At the same time, by now I think that you should also have that abil abil abdatability, which means that you're gonna you're gonna pay a quite low amount of points. You're gonna pay 50%, so you're gonna pay about 2.5 targets uh, per per development. To expand into those lands, into this lands basically, so that's gonna be quite cheap. Uh, so, 
This can be done by admin points and the expansion into here should be done with the double volt CV. Those volt CV you should probably have by now. And expanding it to these guys and making vessels into this side here. What this means, it's quite simple. It means that you're gonna have a decent chunk of vessels and you're gonna expand to Bolchistan. You're gonna uh, expand into Oman as well if at all possible. You might need to have a claim or you might need to take Hormuz first. So you are, you're gonna be able to expand into these guys here. If at all possible, try to release Persia from the Timurids. If they're already on down on, down on their luck and you can expand into those lands. If not, just use Bolchistan as a vessel and expand into the Timurids quite easily and into these guys as well. Then annex, then create another vessel and expand into these guys. Same goes for this part here. Just make a vessel, expand with the, those vaults to be and uh, keep on conquering. This should be done alternatively when it, when it, whatever possible with your focus being on the west side, on the, the lands here and as well as, well as the Mamluks so you can uh, so you can move your trade capital to this lands here, to Alexandria for example so you can actually uh, get more trade here because you're gonna push a decent amount of trade. For the lands here uh, there are tertiary and the lands here as well as there are tertiary as well and uh, you should expand into them with the with those full CV you just take in core because you can have the adaptability and use as many points as you want it's up to you how you want to put off but you want to basically have control into the uh, of the Zanzibar trade node so that you're gonna have to uh, you'll be able to send a merchant there to collect which means that you're gonna gain a decent amount of trade from this area as well that ca this can be done if you if you don't uh, if you don't want to switch trade over to Alexandria because you don't have enough control over the Alexandria train node or you have control over the Hormuz and the Gulf of Aden train node uh, and uh, some something from Basra as well but you don't have enough control in Aleppo or Alexandria so if I want to switch to move your trade to Zanzibar and take full control of Zanzibar which will allow you to basically uh, send a motion there if you, and if nobody's controlling Zanzibar with that will allow you to uh, take control over over the full amount of uh, of cash in the Zanzibar trade node. The same can be done with the Cave of Good Hope, and uh, it's gonna be a little bit troublesome if the Europeans get here. But I'm gonna talk about the Europeans at the end. And the expansion into this guys and this guys should take you into the late game. Another uh, ways of expansion, it'll be to go with the those holes to be to the hordes and move like this and like this. This is again a tertiary war goal and uh, should be quite easy to do if you want to rush and make a tunnel. Like make a tunnel with the CBs all the way up here, then use the Delphal CB to move into this lands here and this lands here to get more land. But remember this, the lands here, if you look at trade, you will not be able to move trade. Like the most important stuff right now in the game when you want to expand is trade. Simply because uh, with the introduction of estates, you're just gonna get uh, you're gonna gain 25% uh, of that development, basically. Like that is the efficient that you're gonna gain from those lands. So they're gonna be quite crap. You can expand into those lands, but they're not gonna be that efficient. So trade becomes really important for you to get the necessary amount of cash to pay for to pay for your armies, basically. Same goes for the new new world nations. Which are play a really good, uh, really important role for the Europeans in getting the necessary cash to pay for their troops, especially for a HRE Emperor. But this is a talk about the, the, the Europeans, and it doesn't actually matter here. Uh, other than this, notable targets that should be difficult to conquer are Ming and the Demoids. The Demoids might break away, might uh, get destroyed eternally. Same goes for Ming. If you're not lucky enough, You'll need uh, about 14,000 troops, but that will mean that you need to have uh, 20,000 artillery in the back row. And have 20,000 artillery in the back row, in the rest so you should have infantry and cav in equal amounts. In the equal amounts, in the necessary amounts, so you can actually squash Ming. Hopefully you're gonna have the tech advantage over Ming, if you're lucky enough you're gonna have at least a discipline, uh, discipline advantage. And what's it called? Uh, I forgot. I always forget. And the military tax advantage as well. 
hopefully from tech 9 or 12 if at all possible for the team raids they usually get destroyed by the, the persians quite fast they are uh, they're likely not gonna be alive and if you declare war on them uh, one time and uh, the persian rebels start going at them they're gonna just break free so they are quite squash squishy if you decide to kill them other than this the ottomans are gonna be are gonna be your next uh, bottleneck basically to for you to go to, into europe but this is gonna be in the late game basically i'll say past the 1600s that you're gonna actually expand into ottomans depending on your speed of course and you might want you will have the necessary amount of troops to beat the ottomans if they weren't unlucky but if they were lucky enough to take over the uh, the mamelukes as well as the Kara and as well as expanding to the Balkan as well, perhaps into Crimea and Italy, if at all possible. This is gonna be quite troublesome. I you, you usually don't want to face around the, the Ottoman stacks, especially in the mountainous regions here, unless you can use them to your advantage, but still quite troublesome. Other than this, there is talk about the colonization. So colonization, once you've taken the Maldives, you can actually perhaps I'm curious enough. Yeah, you're gonna be able to move into Mahe once you've taken over uh, the Maldives as well. And then move into Diego Garcia, then move into Co Cocos Islands, then move into the Christmas Islands, and then move into these guys here. That can be done as well. As well as moving with claims and those will spin to this lands here as well. At the same time, your primary focus should be on the Keep of Good Hope so you can actually kill the Keep of Good Hope colonization options for the Europeans which means that you're gonna take this lands here and kill their expansion there while slowly slowly moving to this side here and hopefully being able to take control over the, the lands here from the Africans if at all possible although this will kill your ability to expand into these regions here simply because you're not gonna have the necessary amount of force limit for you to be able to move your troops from one place to another because moving troops from this land this, this year with ships all the way here it's gonna take you years basically so it's not recommended simply because it's gonna stop the expansion and unification of India which is not that nice You're, you'd rather have a decent amount of lands in India simply because they have quite a decent amount of development if you look here they have a decent amount of development in this region here and in this region here as well and that's going to really help them uh, help me or help you to basically build a decent amount of uh, nations of states sorry not nations especially when you form Baharat and you're going to have uh, 20 states simply because you're going to be an empire but yeah I'm Chevalier hope you enjoyed this if you enjoyed this consider liking and subscribing this is the part two of the initial situation and guide of Fokmanis, the expansion guide. If you like to comment, I really like feedback, so tell me what you feel about this series. With this, I bid you farewell, and I'll see you next time, guys. Ciao.